Hey guys, Casey Foster here from netcodeguides.com doing a demo review here for Counterspec on their DE Mirage match. This is a little bit different type of demo review than what we normally do. This is actually going to be a full team demo review. So it's a new service that we're going to start doing where we're going to review your entire team's demo. So what every player is doing, um, not just what your individual gameplay is. So obviously this is pistol round. Um, you guys win the round pretty convincingly. They kind of just spread out, and you guys basically just get the kit, the picks, and they group back up on B, coming up cat, and um, you guys win the round pretty easily. So, like I said, not much really to commentate on here. You guys get your shots. Pistol rounds are pretty much random. <laughs> not really. The pistols are just really strong, so, you know, anything can happen, and it's obviously a super important round to win. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this. Now, you guys are in what's called an anti-eco. Uh, this is your guys' first mistake where there's something to comment on. You guys are in an anti-eco, and I'm uh, ho hoping you guys know what this term means, but an anti-eco basically means the other team is on an economy round. It's where they save their money. Their main goal is to try and get the bomb down. Obviously, their ultimate goal is to try and win the round, but they're just trying to get the bomb down, trying to get some guns out of your hands, and try and get their economy up. So... You guys are on an anti-eco round. You guys super don't want to lose this round because it puts you guys in a double negative. Um, and an anti-eco round is generally where you're like, hey, guys, we have big guns now. We're going to be as far away from these guys as possible. Use our nades to our advantage because they don't have any armor. They don't, obviously, they do have armor, which is I don't really super recommend. But you guys do have SMGs, so SMGs are a little bit worse or don't do as much damage when they have armor in comparison to previous uh, versions of Counter-Strike. So anyway, um, you guys want to set up in a situation where you're going to use your big guns to your advantage, and this is not what Drew has done. Um, obviously, there's two things that are happening right now that um, obviously I don't have your guys' mumble communication, but they're still here one at A, the other guy's here in connector, the other guy's still in mid. They're flashing B, smoking over B. You guys can hear them coming in the air. Flashes are popping. These guys are running right now, your teammate here on cat, and... It's, you know, like I said, Counter-Strike is a very, um, uh, communication super important. You guys should be rotating. You guys should be sprinting off of A right now with your knives out, rotating to B. Um, it was a little bit slow. That extra one or two seconds actually makes a huge difference in terms of retaking the site. Um, they get the bomb down. Boom. Right now the bomb's planted. They have two kills. They're in a three-on-three -three situation. That's pretty much a round one for them in their eyes. They have the bomb down. They have a gun. Um, you guys are retaking the site. And if they anything else that happens after this it, it, to their advantage is is just bonus. If they get a kill, if they do some damage, even if they lose the round, they still have basically won it because they have the bomb down. So obviously your guys' retake isn't the best. They have a scout and an SMG. This dude gets a really good shot off on you guys here uh, with the P250 here. And, you know, you guys are flustered a little bit. And they're basically just using your guys' guns versus you guys and they win the round. So to explain a little bit um, about what you could have done differently. So uh, like I said earlier, anti-eco round, use your advantage or use your guns to your advantage. Um, T-Shark got two scout kills on cat. Point blank headshots when they were coming out of um, apartments. He was on catwalk, shot them. Crazy play by him. Um, got two kills now now drew you got free fragged basically is, is is a is a common term for that you did like 40 damage but you got two shot killed instantly it's called it was just if you watch any pro stream pro player we just call them free frags um you got killed instantly you did no damage you did nothing i would have liked to have seen you fall back to site to bench uh even just dropping down right in front of the ledge where they have to jump off you have a you have a P90. You're basically, they're just jumping into a grinder. You're just going to sit there and hold mouse one down, just strafing back and forth, just doing all kinds of damage, you know, causing havoc on these guys. But instead, you got free fragged, and they got in the site, plant the bomb. You lost the round. So not the best of eco rounds. All right. And here we are on your guys' eco round, and they're in an anti-eco. So you guys want pistol. They ecoed you guys back. Now you guys are trying to eco. Um, and this is actually... I, uh, I've, I've deleted a few of these videos already because I've, I've had to redo it. But one thing that I want to talk about is having a goal for your eco round. So you guys, 
went to a ramp, pushed it. Bubbles gets two kills on you guys, and then I think you guys trade the frag on him. Yeah. And now what's happened is... Oh, I couldn't click there quick enough. Um, he got two kills and saw two more people. So he's like, hey guys, run straight to B. It's going to be clear. There can only be one person there. They're going to be on a four-on-one situation and in a guy there because he knows that there's two more people at A ramp. So you guys have a gun now and two pistols. Gun meaning the AK. You guys have the AK. Um, they're in the B bomb site. You should know that by now. The bomb's going to go down relatively soon. They're just clearing everything. Make sure you guys are not um, ninjaing anywhere. Bomb goes down. You guys are not anywhere really near the site. You guys aren't really in a situation to really retake the bomb site. And at this kind of point, if you don't have two just really quick kills by either them pushing you guys or that AK getting two kills relatively quickly, obviously he's got low HP now, you pretty much just want to save at this point. Um, it's very unlikely you're going to win the round. They have big guns. They're in the site. You guys are down in numbers. You guys are down in armor. No equipment. And... What you should have done at this point is gone for what's called just exits. Uh, you'll hear a lot of pro players talk about this term, an exit frag. Uh, like you basically just sit where you think they're going to exit the bomb sites and and you get free frags on them or you do some damage or get a kill on them. And you guys had an AK. So that's a very bad eco round on your guys' part. Um one, one thing I mentioned earlier is having a goal. So I'm going to post a link to a eco round video. It's a Netcode Premium video we have. It's an eco round video showing you guys an eco round setup. It's something that Fnatic does. Actually, it's something that pretty much every pro team does. It's a very effective eco round. You guys use a similar part of it on your next eco round because you guys obviously have to save two here because you didn't get any kills. And... You do something similar where you get somebody in the underpass and you get information, but instead he gets information and then he goes and dies. Or actually he gets a kill and then um, dies. But the the main goal of an eco round is to just mess up their economy, get some guns. And the way that you guys did that there by just pushing a ramp with no flashes, it, it, it and I mean you have to know that there's going to be people be people there and you're pretty much not going to kill them with pistols you need to use something to your your advantage and a flash would have been that so you didn't you didn't fully utilize the equipment in the game on your eco round obviously you're not going to you're probably not going to win the round but getting a gun and getting a kill and, and falling back and saving those guns um, is it potentially could have won you this round or helped you win this round or helped you do some more damage and mess up their economy this round so have a goal for your eco rounds. Get some flashes over a ramp. Get some kills. Or get a kill. Fall back. Try and save the gun. Get that dude into underpass with a CZ or something to get all that information as to where they're going, so that you can stack the bomb site that they're going to. Because that spot is basically the middle of of Mirage, and he will know if there's people above him. He'll know that there's people. If there's people not above him, he'll know if there's people coming up cat. And then you guys can basically he'll just say, hey, I don't hear anything above me. Everybody go stack A, and that's where they would have, you know, in, in in that kind of situation, if they did go there, you would increase your chances of winning the round because you would have had everybody there. Um, you could do both of those. You could have the person in underpass as well as pushing over, um, or sorry, pushing a ramp with a flash over, getting a kill and falling back, um, and just using the gun to your advantage and just basically disrupting their strategy. All right, so Saucy actually gets into a very similar situation or play as what I just was talking about, getting somebody into underpass, and he, he gets in here really well, um, gets spotted, you know, acts like he runs away and is chasing up, gets the kill, and now he's going to have a gun. And I would have really have liked to have seen him just, you know, basically give the gun to somebody else. He's he's going to be low. Um, actually, no, sorry, he's got 70 HP. But basically getting the gun into a situation where it can be more effective. Um, him having this gun here at B, and you guys are fighting people at A, it's, it's not really of much use. So basically getting that gun into a situation where it can be effective. And at this kind of point, they're in the A bomb site. Um, you guys get a frag, and <laughs> this goes back to what I said a few rounds ago. If you don't basically kill two or th three of them straight away, you kind of just want to run away and save the gun. Now, obviously, he's running in seat spawn. He's got 70 HP. He's in a three-on-one situation. No kit. Very, very, very unlikely to win the round. They obviously heard him go there, so they're gonna start pinching on him. Um, 
I think this guy actually heard him because that's why they're all looking here and this guy's kind of creeping on CT spawn. So, you know, it's it's not really going to hurt your economy, hurt their economy too much to get a gun here um, because they've won three in a row and got the bomb down in the last three rounds. So even if you did get the kill, you're not really um, doing much damage to their money. Obviously, look at them. They've, you know, three people had 8K, so... In a, in a situation where you can save a gun, save a gun. Um, e even though you guys can fully buy this round, that is a good gun. A Galil is a good gun. It's the same thing as a rifle. If not, it's better than the M4A4 now with just a little bit more recoil. But it would have potentially have given you more money to buy the next round. Um, drop some pistols or something. So economy is a huge thing. And a lot of you know lower tier Counter-Strike players don't take this into consideration or put much emphasis on it that every, every dollar spent and every gun dropped from the team that you're playing against or you guys saving a gun it adds up and dropping some you know obviously like i just said it wasn't super imperative that you got some kills in that ct spawn situation with the galil but you know it could have if you would have killed the next if actually if you'd have killed two of them you know you would have have damaged their economy a little bit but saving the gun for yourself enables you to drop pistols for your teammates the next round or something or have some kind of equipment for the next round that is an eco round um it's just it's just important to do, so keep that in mind. All right, and here you guys are on your first gun round. I actually have a lot to talk about on your guys' first gun round, your guys' execution, or your guys' sorry, anti-execution, counter flashes of when they start hitting the site, and also your guys' setup. Um, so what you guys like to do is have this guy mid, and then uh, T-Shark goes cat a lot. And I'm not sure if he's here yet, but... He will be here in a second. So, you guys, um, obviously, these guys play very passive, and this is this is not the most effective use of your teammates. Um, I'm gonna wait until he gets into the situation here, but he'll be here in a second. Okay, so he's basically watching cat, and you were what saucy slaves was watching left mid. He would have known. If there was somebody there because he was watching i've watched this demo a few times he was watching mid the entire time your teammate is pushed out of connector now this is so much information it's retarded your teammate is pushed up b um he doesn't hear anything he actually peeks down here earlier sees nobody your teammates are pushed out of connector looking under balcony your teammate is looking in mid uh sorry under balcony um underpass looking underpass sees nothing you have to know that they're going A now. Like this is like, it's so obvious and you have so much information. And I'm not sure if you guys are not saying, all right, underpass is clear, B halls is clear, mid is clear. There's nothing going on. They have to be A ramp. There's pretty much nowhere else in the entire map that they can be. So now what they do is they start hitting the bomb site with some smokes and flashes here. Obviously you guys are kind of rotated back to your positions, but you have all this information on the other side of the map. There's no reason for somebody to still be on cat. There's no reason for... I mean, obviously, leaving somebody mid is fine because he can quick rotate to A. But stacking the site where you know that they're going to be is super important, and it's not happening right now. You guys are basically going to be in a two-on-five situation or a two-on-three, uh, five-on-three situation with your teammate and connector or uh, jungle. And this is, you know, it's just really obvious. Look, there's still a dude here at B. Uh, still a dude here on cat, still a guy window, and then this guy's by stairs. And they start throwing these smokes over. You get a little excited, right? The, the smokes are still coming in the air. They're not going to run in front of those smokes. This is a complete waste of a flash. Um, you need to wait until those smokes are popped because there's no way that they're going to be running out before those smokes are popped. And actually, let me see. Yeah, so they're actually still here on ramp. I didn't even need to look, and I knew that they were here. But So they throw the smokes. Pretty much every team is going to do this. They're going to throw the smokes. They're going to wait like one second for the nades and the flashes to pop. Even though it gives you guys a little bit more time to rotate, it's still it's more beneficial for them to be running into sight with full HP than to get hit by a monster nade. So you pop that flash a little early. They get an early pick on you guys. Four and five situation. They've got the site all smoked out. They've got great positioning. This dude's by stairs. Um, they're, in, they're in great post-plant positions. And you guys are just smoked out completely. You guys are... Look at this guy. Still looking in mid. Um, not really much going on. Here's another mistake. So this guy that's to the left of T-Shark just killed this guy that is that was right here in jungle. <clears throat> well, that's weird. 
This model's turned around. Okay, so this guy right here in jungle just died to this guy right here, and T-Shark is coming up connector, has no information that there's somebody on stairs. Run straight out, free fragged. I don't know if that was a miscommunication or if it was just him not checking things, but I know for sure that that guy was shooting at that guy in connector. He actually died to the guy in sight, but he could have been like, hey, there's a guy on stairs, there's a guy in sight. T-Shark needs to, to process this information and apply it to what he's doing. And um, it was not. So here is Slays in a pretty much a full save, a time to be fully saving. Um, he has a gun that is worth $4,700. And he tries to run away. That's actually a really good flash. And at this point, you have to commit to running to one way. You know that that guy, you heard that guy coming through uh, jungle. You know that there was a dude behind you in CT spawn because he was shooting at you. But basically, you're going to die. You're, you're going to die regardless. Okay, you're not going to die regardless. If you land to some crazy shots, you may not die. But you have to commit to one of these spots, either running back into CT spawn uh, to fight that guy that you just flashed or just fully rushing this guy that's going to be coming through the 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 window room little hole you have to commit to one of them to try and stay alive it's just it's your only option um and pretty much just standing here missing the shot getting free fragged you lose the op um you may even have have wanted to start to save a little bit earlier in the round because your teammates weren't getting the refrags or the, the the kills on the the site retake Okay, and we're here on your guys' eco. Um, you guys just lost the first gun round. Obviously not too much money. You guys got two kills. They lived with three players. You guys lost the op at the end of the round. Um, and this is a problem right here. Your guys' eco round, you have uh, T-Shark has armor and a scout. Um, buying a smoke is fine. And then I think somebody goes back and no he doesn't okay so he just runs out of spawn <laughs> he buys all kinds of stuff yeah i think he had 5200 i think um scouts 22 something puts him at 3k hopefully he gets a kill to be able to buy next round i don't fully agree with this um oh <laughs> i want to talk about that damn okay so you guys run straight to mid this dude jumps out of window room and the other guy comes connector and this guy gets a really crazy spray down actually if you watch the demo he gets a really good spray down but either way um i wanted to talk about this earlier you have to know the you have to know the spawn points of the map and you have to know the timings of the map you have to have the best ct spawn we actually have a video about this it shows the timings of all the important parts on the map and you have to know that you have to have the best ct spawn and you have to break that door, the little hole getting into window, and you have to flawlessly jump through that quickly to be able to beat them to mid if they have the best spawn. And Saucy, obviously, he did not he did not have the, the two things. He did not have the best spawn, and he did not have the very s flawless, smooth jump through the window room little hole to jump out of window room to beat the guy to team mid. Echo gets a pretty sick spray down on you, and then the dude that jumped out of connector for some reason um he killed as well with the same spray so obviously there's two things there you have to know the spawn timings uh, the map timings but then also this is a complete waste of another eco round you're 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 not doing anything you just ran out mid and they have big guns they're going to use their distance to their advantage and they get two free kills on you complete waste of you actually bought a p one of you guys bought a p250 there um or five seven complete waste of time complete waste of money didn't do anything um t shark has a scout here on cat I would rather have seen him dropped like two pistols and then had a flash and then use that same strategy that I mentioned earlier. We're flashing you guys over a ramp and trying to get a gun. Um, obviously there's nobody there, but it's still the gamble you want to take because you could potentially get a gun. So they're going to win this, this eco round pretty convincingly. Um, big guns versus little guns. T shark has that scout still. And at this point you're pretty much wanting to save because they're going to hunt you down. You've shot your scout like three times. They know you have a gun. Um, you have all kinds of options here. You could have jumped into apartments and played the close quarter battles with a pistol, um, but instead you kind of just hang out here and eventually end up dying. Um, that was a complete waste of money. And obviously you're still able to buy because you have the round bonus, but a much more effective use of the money of that scout would have been to give your given your teammates some pistols and some flashes to try and win that round. All right, and here we are on your guys' gun round after the eco. Um, just something to touch on here and it goes back to the information thing 
um, counter, like I said, information counter strike super important. If you don't see somebody somewhere, you can pretty much tell your teammates, hey, there's nobody here. They can know that there's nobody at that side of the map. That there's going to be more people in another side of the map. And what happens here is you basically <laughs> effectively clear out a halls. Obviously, it's not the best flashes or best way to do it, but you still do it. And you clear the corner. Now, what needs to happen is you could have been like, hey guys, there's nobody in a halls. And your CT spawn player can get into a better position because you have a huge advantage being in your being in your spot if they end up do coming back out of a ramp and stuff. Obviously, they do later on in the round, but your teammate in CT spawn can get into a much better position. Your teammates in mid, um, you know, they can they can adjust accordingly. So speed this up a little bit and um, they end up do coming back to a ramp obviously you hear them all and their flashes and all that stuff coming over and you clear out halls again and it's a fine play but taking these fights right here is not really necessary because your teammates are just basically grinding them as they're coming into the site you guys have numbers you guys have angles now you guys are in a five on two situation here this should pretty much be like a, a free round you should win this four you should have four people alive, three people alive. Obviously, when you guys are low, um, you guys are in a three-on-one situation right there. This should be pretty much a round one. And now what happens is you guys all peek him one by one. And th this gets very, very, very close. So, look, he gets, he gets that kill right there. Obviously, this guy is very close. But the first two people should not have died. There, you knew where this guy was at because he killed somebody earlier in the round. And he had an op. And obviously T-Shark gets the trade kill on him. But th th that's a 5-on-2 that gets down to a 1-on-1. One -one. You guys win the round. Good job. But it was a very, very sloppy round. When you guys are in these kinds of numbers, everybody's like, oh, it's a 4-on-1 situation. Let me just rush this guy, push him, and kill him. But, you know, things happen in CS. Obviously, it got down into a 1-on-1. -on -one. Um, what you guys need to do, and in, in, in obviously pro teams make the same mistakes too, but... Usually if a player wins like a 4-on-1 clutch or a 5-on-1 clutch or a 3-on-1 clutch, it's not that because of that one player is so much better than the other three players or four players. It's that those three and four players made a mistake, made stupid mistakes, stupid small mistakes that allowed that player to get into that kind of situation. So what you guys need to do is say, hey, guys, 3-on-1 or 4-on-1. He was A-ramp. He got a kill earlier. Let's just fucking collapse on this guy from all angles at the same time. So at most, he's going to kill one person because he has an op, and we're just going to collapse on him and get the trade frag and just not lose a whole bunch of money so obviously you guys do win the round but it was not the best uh situation okay and you guys won the previous round um it was the round where you guys got into the uh they came up cat t-shirt got two kills it was a pretty pretty standard round so here what's happening or what's happening is they're basically just working picks they're just you know slow peeking things just seeing what's going on what you guys are doing um you have a player watching ramp you have to expect that pretty much every round there's going to be a player at t ramp and i think this is the round yeah so he he hears you jumping on the boxes your teammate is watching it from ct spawn um obviously he wasn't watching it at the exact time maybe he looked away that he killed you but Either way, you're still in a position that you just should not be. There's no reason for you to be outside of basically, there's like a line um, that's on like the right side of those boxes. You pretty much should never be past that because they can get around that corner, shoot you before he can, this opera right here can, can get a shot off. And you're, you're not gaining in, any information by playing on the balcony on the end of it like that. And you, you got picked. So... Obviously, if your teammate was a little bit, you know, wider peaked, he would have got the trade frag, whatever. The the oh, the moral of the story here is do not get free fragged 30 seconds into the round of putting your teammates in a 4 on 5 situation on Mirage. The rotates are super long. It's to the T's advantage in those kind of situations to be up in numbers. So you just don't want to be there. Playing under balcony is totally fine. Playing on the balcony is totally fine. Playing behind the fire box is totally fine. Playing behind the triple stack in sight, totally fine. Um, no reason for you to be on balcony. Um, not sure if you feel more comfortable there or if it was the thing to do. Okay, so the next thing in this round is T Shark here is on cat. He's hearing all these dudes coming out of the site or um, in in halls coming out of the site. 
He sees them, takes some shots. Now, he get. I'm going to give you, tell you what happens in the future. He gets a kill and dies. Now, at this kind of situation right here, he sees three in sight. You guys are four on four situation. They're in the site. You guys are a slow rotate, two in mid, still one at A, and he's NB. Now, this is a decision making situation here. Um, any. Uh, the smart play here, sorry, to take that back, the smart play here is to just simply fall back and wait at the corner for your teammates to come and retake the site um, and not try and be the hero right here and and take the three-on-one or four-on-one fight. Um, obviously, he gets the kill here. Great. He has tons of cover at this kind of situation. You you have, uh, you can get naded. They can push you, but they have to push you or they have to nade you to do any kind of damage. You have four bullets left with the, with the M4. You take another fighter to do that bench and you die. You guys are in a three on three situation now. Now, potentially, if you would have just reloaded and stood still, not done anything, you would have had a four on three situation with the bomb down and you know where some team, you know the bomb was planted so you know there's one in sight. You know potentially there's gonna be somebody lurking around in halls. You can't assume that, but you can you can for sure say that you killed one in halls, potentially not gonna be another one there, or, um, by the van or by bench and you know 100% that there's one inside because he just planted the bomb. Playing your numbers in, in CS is super important. Dying in those kind of situations only puts you guys at a massive disadvantage. I think you guys still, I uh, don't really remember what you do, but this round would have played out a lot differently. Um, oh yeah, so you guys don't know this guy's here. Okay, so yeah, the better play for T-Shark would have just been to have stayed alive and <clears throat> took the took the time and just let you guys rotate and you guys would have played numbers um, and had a much better chance of winning that round. Obviously that dude that was at car got some cool some good op shots um, and won the round. The next thing is here this guy drew spent a bunch of time running around the site looking for the player and did not tap the bomb early enough to get him out of his his spot. So what you would like to have done is as soon as you cleared a few spots you didn't know where he was at just run straight to the bomb tap the defuse, it will force him out of his spot because he has to check that you're not on the bomb or you, or you are on the bomb. And you basically tap the bomb and you start to walk. And the reason that you walk is because if you're making sound, he's going to know that you're not on the bomb and he's going to have to peek you. Or if you're sorry, if you, if you do make sound, he's not going to peek you because he knows you're not on the bomb. But if you walk, he doesn't know if you're on the bomb or not and he has to peek you. So <clears throat> it's in your advantage to just run straight to the bomb. If you watch any pro team, that's exactly what they do. They run straight to the bomb, force the player out of their spot if they don't know where he's at, and you're going to have a much better chance of winning that round. All right, and we're on another eco round. <clears throat> um, you guys have got to work on your eco rounds. You've got to work on managing your economy well for eco rounds. Buying head armor on an eco is a huge waste of time. The AK is a one-shot kill. Um... There's no point. There's no way that you guys know exactly what their money's at right now. Obviously, they're on a low buy with with Galils, but either way, head armor is kind of useless. Having a kit is nice. One of you guys should have a kit, and then T Shark has a taser. Um, <laughs> I don't really recommend that. Um, he actually pulls off a crazy taser round later on in the match, but still not an effective use of income. So I actually talked a little bit earlier about an eco round flashing over a ramp and getting the push kill. Um, the smoke here does not work to your advantage. It actually works against you. So you guys have smoked off ramp and you threw a flash into ramp. Now the guy potentially may be blind, but he knows it's smoked. So you guys are going to have to push all the way through the smoke, get in his face. More than likely, he's going to be unflashed by the time that you guys can see him because that smoke is there. So try and work on that. Don't, you know, Take, take everything I'm telling you in this video and just apply it directly to your game. I, I guarantee you'll be a better Mirage team. Using that one flash over the ramp, you guys potentially would have got that kill on that dude because he would have been flashed. Um, <laughs> T-Shark actually does get a taser kill. Um, <laughs> either way, still not really worth the risk. But, um, you know, using that smoke and that flash combo on ramp, is it, it just it worked against you. Um, you guys just need to really work on your eco round kills and just try and get some guns and save them. Um, stop buying stupid stuff. Stop buying head armor. It's a complete waste of time and money. Okay, and this is potentially a gun round. Um, this is what we call a broken buy, and it's a it's a it's a tough call 
you guys obviously need to win rounds. Um, so you you do execute a broken buy here. I, I I don't fully agree with what you bought three XO. Uh, you put, could have bought a Famas, had something. Um, but this this is a thing that I'm going to touch on quickly is is about the economy. Um, T side they have AKs. It's a one shot headshot kill. If you cannot fully afford equipment on CT side, and you have a choice between head armor and regular armor, and you can definitely buy one of the two, and you cannot fully afford the rest of your smokes and nades and flashes if you buy one always go for just regular armor that the, if they hit you in the head they're going to kill you regardless armor doesn't really regular armor doesn't really do a whole lot with versus ak's either but if you want a one you obviously feel a little bit more comfortable when you have armor but you need to fully buy equipment if you cannot um if you have to pick between one or one or one or the other um I think you guys uh, end up winning this round. I'm pretty sure. Um, let's see what happens here. Yeah, I remember that. So he got into a the just too easy dude got into a or saucy place. Yeah, just too easy got into a really sick spot. It's theirs. Got two easy kills one, or one easy kill, one kill through the smoke. You guys won the round. So statistically speaking, you guys probably should have saved that round. I can see why you guys forced. It was a risky play and it worked out for you. You know, that's that's you have to take these calculated risks. Um, but I would like to have seen, you know, 3XO, if you would have had a FAMAS there, you would have done some damage and made that round a little bit easier. But good job on the hold and good job on the retake. Okay. okay. And this may sound a little bit like hindsight because obviously we're watching the demo, but it's not. Um, you can see here, you have two rounds won, or they won five in a row, then you won two, which if they, if they bought both times and then they lost both of those rounds they're going to be on a low buy on their for this gun round here and they win that round they win another then you guys win the round so now you guys have reset their money and at this point you guys need to keep so I mean, when when we used to play i would everybody would know every round if it was an eco round or not because you have to keep track of the other team's money and <clears throat> here's what ha here what happened here we'll just let this round play out um you guys are setting up for an anti-eco, kind of, or this just may be his every, everyday play. Um, he threw the smoke. He threw a nade in the smoke. Um, what I would like to have seen Drew, done, or do, Drew do is do what Pronex does. He basically stands on the backside of this ledge, like on the ground, and just run and jumps up. And he just goes back and forth because you can spot in the halls. You can see if they're coming. If he would have been doing that, he could have thrown probably like a 250 damage nade because he would have seen all of them coming. Oh, oh, oh crap. All these smokes and flashes are coming up. Let me drop a nade on them real quick and just do a whole bunch of damage. Instead, um, you're up on the balcony and you take this fight here. And like I said, in like the second round, the pistols are strong. And that smoke, you know, they got all up in your face really quickly. Um, I'm not sure if they threw that second smoke, but I think they did to get close to you. But, um, you know, you did, you weren't set up for that play. And Drew now has seen all five players. He died. He saw all five people jump over his body. And, and here, here's a big problem. 3XO, you're still at a bomb site. Um, and the just too easy guy was just getting to the site or getting to window room. There was like no real sense of urgency on the retake there. You guys basically, once he calls, hey guys, all 5B, you pull your knives out immediately and you sprint to the other bomb site. Um, and this is another problem here on your guys' retake. It's really slow. There's no real sense of urgency. Um, you guys took all kinds of time getting back into the site. And that smoke that you guys actually threw from window room right in front of this guy here actually gave him an advantage because it gave him something to hide behind. He got two kills on you guys running in the site. And now you guys are in a two-on-one situation. Bombs planted. It's pretty much uh, impossible to win the round. I uh, would like to have seen you tap the bomb, get him out of his position. But either way, he got the kill. So to recap on that round, um, you need to keep track of economy. You need to know what they're going to be doing or have a general idea of what they're going to be doing. Winning two rounds, then winning two rounds. Pretty much every situation, you're going to be resetting their money. Um, you guys knew that they had some galils. So that's what, those are like low buys, right? And you need to play according. Um, Drew, I would like to have seen you spotting into A-Halls by just using that ramp 
uh, just standing on the ground and just jumping over the ledge. If you watch Pronex, he does it every single round. He's on Fnatic. He plays B. He does it every single round. He doesn't use any equipment. He doesn't throw a flash. He doesn't throw a smoke. No nades. No nothing until he sees somebody. Um, because you pretty much, when you're jumping over that ledge like that, you can jump up in a way that you can just see over the edge and they can't shoot your head. Um, and you would have potentially have saved that nade, saved that smoked, um, been able to have thrown a flash to flash them all, and just put yourself in a much better situation in an anti eco, uh, and uh, win the round. So a little small mistake like that is can you know it has won them another eco round this is the second time they've ecoed you guys and they you know that that if they didn't win these two ecos if they didn't eco you on the second round and they didn't eco you here you can basically total yourself up four extra rounds that you would have won if you didn't eco be, or if they didn't eco you because they would have had to have saved the next because they obviously wouldn't have got any kills <laughs> and then they would have had to have saved one more and then buy the next. So it could have that basically could have changed the uh, outcome of this match. You guys potentially would have won the match if you guys didn't get ecoed. Um, I think you guys win both pistols. I'm not sure if you win the next, but I know you won CT side. So um, just better positioning on 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 ecos, using the information that you can gain by jump spotting B halls to your advantage, and and playing accordingly. Okay, and here we are on what should have been another anti eco. But instead, T-Shark has bought a rifle and head armor, and Drew has armor as well. Um, your guys' buys are just all over the place. You have got to buy together as a team and not buy together as a team. Um, it, 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 you're just not going to have much success if you guys cannot work together as a team, having guns at the same time. Oh, look at that guy. He bought just too easy, bought head armor as well. Um, Head armor and a 5.7. You're not going to have much luck. You're not going to be effectively utilizing the equipment and the guns in the game to your advantage if you guys are not doing it together. Um, that's the first thing. The next thing is this random push up mid. You're on an eco round, random push up mid. They have AKs, they have the distance. You're, you're going to lose this every time. Next thing is you have to know that the smoke here allows your body to be seen before you can see them. Uh, when you're walking up the ledge, they can see below the smoke. You can't see above the smoke, and they basically just get a free frag on you in the early in the round. Um, completely useless death. Uh, nothing was there was nothing to come out of it. Um, it was basically just a really unnecessary death. Um, Drew gets a good job getting a gun on the dude who came out of a ramp and then gets a early kill on the dude coming out of connector. You guys are on a three on three situation. You have two guns and they're regrouping and hitting B. Now here at this point, T shark, hears this guy coming halls. Um, he's aware of them obviously. And they're, they're obviously going to know that there's going to be somebody on cat. He takes the fight. Three on three situation, 50 seconds left. You guys have two guns. You can you could potentially win this round. Um, you don't have any kits, but you could potentially still win this round if you stay alive. He takes the fight and dies. That's a that's that's pretty much the end of the round. Um, that uh, that 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 decision to take the fight and not just wait it out and wait for your teammates to rotate actually just too easy was really close because you obviously got the plant the, the the post planner or the kill post plant um and if you would have just stayed alive you guys would have killed the guy and you would have been alive on cat you would have had a colt you probably would have killed the other dude leaving the site you guys would have been on a three on one situation and um obviously just too easy goes back to his same spot that he killed the planner from and you guys lose another gun another, another round um, obviously, it was an eco round, so that's a really good eco round. You guys got it down to a 1v1. You guys got some kills. Um, obviously, they can still buy here, but a simple mistake like that, just taking fights when you don't need to, lost you guys that round. You guys would have won an eco round um, if you would have just fallen back and just played like the surprise. Like They didn't know you were there. Obviously, they have to check that, and they got the kill on you, but they didn't 100% know that, know that you were there. And simply just hiding and and giving them the plant or trying to disrupt the plant maybe if they plan out in the open um but you know everything is situational in cs so in that situation the best place is to just hide 
and they don't know that you're there and just play the surprise card. All right, and, and here we are on another eco round. Obviously, you guys have bought head armor again. Um, T-Shark has this taser, and this is actually the round I was talking about earlier. He gets a pretty sick play. Uh, it's actually a pretty good play if they jump out of window. If they don't jump out of window, you're not going to be close enough to get the kill, but they do jump out of window, obviously. Let's go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. Um, T-Shark makes a pretty big play here. Boom, gets the taser kill, gets the gun. They still jump out for some reason and gets to spray down through the smoke. That guy had an op. Boom, nice 3K by T-Shark. Very risky play, calculated risk, uh, but it was a risky play and it turned it, it worked out well. So now, check this out. You guys are in a five on one situation. Let me get in this dude's POV. Crap. He got a 2K on, on T-Shark that had the AK and then Threx. 3XO that was in sight. It was a it was like a two v it was like a two for one. You guys basically lined up. Saucy peaked um, quickly, and Theorist got another headshot kill. So he basically made a five on one situation into a two v one. This is totally winnable. Um, you guys got a little excited pushing him because you guys are in one of those situations like, oh crap, you know it's five on one. Let's just get this round over with. Great job, guys. Uh, this is now your guys' buttholes are puckering a little bit. Obviously, he makes a mistake here of planning out in the open. Um, this is a little bit of Neko Premium advice for him. If you don't know where everybody's at, always plant safe. Always, 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 always plant safe. I actually made a video recently about how to clutch, and <laughs> I made a mistake of planning out in the open when I didn't know where the other guys are at. So, always plant safe if you have the opportunity. And he plants out in the open, and you get the kill. So great job to T-Shark by getting the taser kill and the, the next two kills. And then you guys basically get into a 2v1, and you win the round. But, you know, it's a good eco round, but it was a risky play. But the the moral of this story is don't get so excited when you're in these 5v1 situations. I, talked a little, I hit a little bit earlier on about... Um, the way that clutches do happen, like theorist is not like that much better than you guys. You guys just made simple mistakes and he capitalized on them and turned a really shitty situation into a winnable situation. Um, but you guys still came out on top. So good eco round. And sometimes eco rounds do require just some random taser kill and uh, a, a, a 2k. So good job. All right. All right. And we're here on the last round of the half. Um, I think that they know that B is weak, so they've been coming to B a lot. And obviously, I'm going to give you guys a better CT setup um, at probably near the end of this video. Recommend some videos to watch for your guys' CT setups. But this is, um, for some reason, you guys switch spots. That's something I really don't really recommend. If it's a spot you guys play during scrims and what you practice with, just stick with it. Um, this spot right here that just too easy is in is a really powerful spot. Um, he, he, you, you should pretty much always get at least one kill here. If not, you can kill all of them from this spot because it's super overpowered because they have to peek down on you. Their recoil is going to go up. It's going to miss you. Uh, they have to get really close to you. They have to get very close to the edge to shoot down. So I actually talked a little bit about this earlier. You need to use information to your advantage. You needed to be jump peeking into B halls to see if they were coming. You threw this flash a little late, and he catches you out with your flash and gets an early kill on you. That pretty much right there should lose the round. Um, I think you guys end up do winning the round, but it's still in that spot. You should get at least two kills um, on a B rush like that. It's just they're basically just running into a grinder. Um, and and using the advantage that you could have got a little bit earlier in the round to your advantage by just jump peeking into halls would have made that a whole lot easier and um, you know definitely would have easily have won the round so you guys get into a little butt pucker uh, situation here where he's defusing the bomb he jumps out you actually haven't even shot him yet and killed him and you do get the defuse but it was very, very, very close. If he would have killed the diffuser right there, you guys would have lost the round because you wouldn't have had enough time. So a um, bunch of little things happen in on your guys' CT side. You guys were on miss buys a lot. Um, your guys' ecos miss buys, meaning you guys were buying random stuff at times where other people weren't buying random or other people weren't buying stuff. Obviously, it worked out for you one time. Um, your guys' ecos aren't very good. You need to have a goal for each one of your eco rounds. Um, your guys' CT setup is a little weak. Um, they 
you guys started giving up mid and they started capitalizing on the mid like they knew that you were giving up mid and playing passive insights so then they just simply smoked you guys off and executed so i'm going to recap this all at the end of the video but that will be the end of your guys ct side and starting the t side now all right and this is your guys's t side pistol round um you guys didn't have the best of ct you guys pretty much have to win this round to have a shot at winning this match and you guys do a slow walk b now the player to watch here is mint he does a really good job he gets a nade off here and basically if there was anybody up close it would have done a whole bunch of damage and he's spotting you guys right now he's seeing the smokes go up and that right there that amount of information was humongous you guys don't know that he saw you obviously you guys might have heard his bullets or felt his bullets like hitting the walls and stuff but hit a silence usp so you guys might have been talking or doing something and he actually does a really good job here he knew all that you guys were there all of you guys were there the ct rotate is coming in already um really good job on his part now i i don't really um I, I, I don't really want it. see the thing is you guys don't know that he saw you but that was the problem you guys didn't know that he saw you so once he saw you he called the rotate and the, then you guys are going to run into a four-man stack um, at this point you pretty much can't go B because you're going to be running into a four-man stack if there was one or two there you could potentially win the round but if there's going to be four people there when you guys are hitting the site um, you're pretty much not going to win the round so what happened was he saw you guys deep in the halls he called the rotate now what happens is by the time you guys move from the position that you're at and you're into the site, the CTs can be pretty much halfway to Bob site B. And he got so much early information off on you guys, um, rotated back to bench. This is what I was trying to explain to you guys to do is to get the information and fall back. Um, obviously he gets some random shot here through the smoke, gets some damage off on the second guy and obviously gets that first kill on Saucy. Now, you guys are basically just running into a grinder here, three on five. You guys have pretty much no HP. Um, <clears throat> you just you, you you just didn't know that he got all that information on you, but you have to you have to know if they get that kind of information on you. If you watch a pro match, they're gonna basically set up for the same kind of play, but they'll always have somebody watching to see if somebody pushes to see if somebody gets that information because if they do get that information, you have to adjust accordingly. Okay, okay, and here you guys are on an eco round. Um, you guys have a pretty, I think it's a set play. I don't know if you guys just came up with this on the, on the whim, but it's a good eco round. Actually, you're probably your best eco round. Um, you guys have two smokes that come off from ramp and you guys smoke, uh, stairs and CT spawn, I think. And this is actually a, a pretty good play. So you guys have good smokes, but what happens is this guy Molotov's ramp. So they know. They know there was a smoke that came out of halls. They heard you and two smokes from ramp. They know that you guys are there. The 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 five seconds that your teammates waited right here on the back side of that molly single-handedly lost you that round. You have to just run and jump through that Molotov. Um, you guys would have had all of these all of this free open site to get the bomb down. Now you do have to remember that you guys got the bomb down last round. If you get the bomb down this round, you're gonna have a full blown buy. Um, you guys get in the site, get some kills. Your teammate starts to plant the bomb. Obviously, there's another guy in sight. Now, if you think about getting into the site five seconds earlier, not not waiting for that Molotov, you guys would have basically been fighting a five versus two or a three, five versus three situation. And you guys for sure would have got the bomb down. You for sure would have got that those kills that you did get because they were in the same, the same spots. Um, you guys do end up losing this round with no bomb down. So it's not really that effective of an eco round. You did get some kills, but you just, you you ultimately needed to not wait for those Molotovs. You have to like, it's um, it's that, that waiting on the backside of that Molotov lost you the round. Um, sorry, not lost you the round, but it, it really affected the round. You would have definitely got the bomb down. You would have had all kinds of money here to buy all your AKs and grenades that you wanted. So keep that in mind next time when executing that strat. Um, it's a pretty good play. You guys got everything smoked off well. You got the kills going into sight. And um, you just have to remember that that, that uh, urgency is of importance. Uh, all right, and here we are on a gun round. So you guys got bombed down first, lost the next eco, and 
you guys have a pretty set play, it looks like. You guys run straight into your guys' set smokes and flashes in the first five seconds of the round. Really don't recommend doing this. Um, let me slow this down a second. Really don't really recommend um, doing that because CS is such an informational kind of thing. Um, you guys don't really know how they're setting up. You don't know where they have their ops, if they have one. You don't know what they're doing. Um, now, here's something that a lot of people don't really understand. So, T-Shark gets into a spot. This dude pushes B. Um, he's got a SMG. He's pushing B. Um, fast forward this a little bit. Mint gets the kill on him. Now, what happens is you guys are in a four-on-five situation. Great. You got, what you guys don't know is that Bubble has cleared mid Bubbles. He's about to clear underpass, but he didn't. Obviously, you ran the other way. He's cleared mid. Now, at this point, they know for sure that everybody is A. They have a three-man stack on A. You guys are in a four-on-five situation. Um, they're, they're fully expecting you guys here. They're ready and amped. They're like, all right, guys, they're hitting A. Let's go. These guys are not flashed. You guys did throw a stair smoke. You guys smoked off spawn, I think. Um, but yeah, you did smoke off spawn, but all he's going to do is just play on the opposite side of it and just get the free frags on you guys coming into sight because they're not flashed. So when they were hitting their executes on T side, I think they came to A site once. They threw smokes over and flashes, and they raped you guys because you guys were all blind. It's a very easy site to flash. Um, you could throw flashes over the wall and flash them. So what happened was they had all this information on you guys. You guys got the kill on the B player. Now, what happened was you got the kill, but he has a death cam. He can see, hey, guys, there, there's only one there at underpass. There's no one else there. That means they're they're elsewhere on the map. And the bubbles dude cleared mid. He cleared underpass. So there, he knew that there was nobody else underpass. It's a pretty much guarantee that they're all A. So that information, you guys have to think, oh, shit, they know that we're here. We have to do something else. And you guys were in the man advantage. I would not have recommended you guys to go into your A execute. Even though you're down on numbers, you're still going to be fighting the same amount of people that were there regardless if you got that pick or not. So I would have liked to have seen you guys go back into some kind of mid play, smoke off mid and take up cat or something because you got that B pick. Play your numbers. Play where they're down on man. And... And just use that kind of information to your advantage. Um, obviously, on your A execute, it's a little weak. The smokes were good, but the counter, the flashes were bad, and your your teammates were getting hung around. Um, uh, what do you call this spot here? Like, out just right in front of the ramp. Uh, uh, what the hell is it called? Just a bunch of boxes, basically. I don't really remember. So. You guys all got caught around that. Your main goal is to get out of that area because that's where the CTs are just going to be focusing. They're going to be bombing nades and flashes over there. Obviously, they didn't throw too much, but they are not flashed. You guys needed to be flashing over the wall, and you need to get out of that area and get under the balcony and run around and get out from underneath um, sandwich and stuff and just get in their face um, if that's what you wanted to do. But like I said, I don't really recommend going into a full set A strat when you have a pick on the other side of the map. Okay, and you guys are here on another eco route, and you guys like this B play uh, on your eco route. It's a it's a good play if it's done right, but unfortunately, <laughs> he sees you guys all again and gets the information, and um, he basically will lay this smoke down. I think. Oh, they switched spots. Okay, yeah. So they sp they spotted you earlier, and this dude's going to come back and spam you with the AK. So they hear you guys, or they don't hear you guys yet, but they he saw you guys earlier. Now they hear you guys, and Bubbles throws a good smoke, and you guys just run into a grinder. And you guys, again, didn't know that he saw you. So he could see, like, the fronts of your guys' guns when you guys were lining up your smoke, and then he could see you guys moving by. It's a, it's a very small crack peak, but it's a very common spot that a lot of teams will will peak because they know that they can see you there so you guys just have to be aware of that um and and just play accordingly i would have liked to have seen you just wait that out a little bit longer um maybe spot that to see if he peaks you and force him back off the spot then go into the play all right and this is your guys's next gun round um i've noticed a pattern with how you guys execute your t plays you guys really like to bunch up um you guys aren't really gaining much information as to where people are at. You guys have one guy underpass, three guys halls, and one guy T-mid. Um, 
I think this guy gets shot at in mid. He gets shot at. I don't think he gets the kill, but he gets shot at. And um, they now know that there's somebody mid. So, luckily that dude didn't die there. But the 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 moral of this story is you guys aren't gaining much information by bunching up. You guys are all basically just in the same spot. Um, you're not finding out where the CTs are playing, what guns they have, you know, where they're at. You can't do that when you're just all bunched up. And um, you guys have waited a whole, you guys have, have, has, have waited about 50 seconds now to like actually start like doing something. So you're leaving yourself about 37 seconds to execute a strat. Your guys' bomb is, where is this? This guy have the bomb? Um, your guys' bomb is in B halls. And it's, it's given yourself about 50, you know, you have 20 seconds now to execute a strategy. It's a pretty much a round lost. And, you know, that just comes from you guys just bunching up. I would like to see you guys spread out, go to a ramp, mess around with the a ramp and the, and the, the stairs player, get some information, go halls, go underpass, go mid, um, get to the, get to the boxes in mid, you know, you just have to get information and drew dying right there at the end of the after time is really going to screw your guys' economy. He has $600. He died after time. You have to know that you can't die after time. Um, if there's even a possibility that you die after time, you just run away and you don't die after time. So you guys do a force buy anyway. Um, don't really, don't really recommend that. You guys have to be universal with your buys. You have to be, um, you know, you have to, you have to be, you have to be, you have to talk more and just work more as a team. So, to preface something that I said on your last round, you guys, did, you guys did not get any information. You guys did not work different parts of the map. And this is the first round that you actually do do that. And look what happens. Let's just let this play out real quick. T-shirt gets an early pick on the mid guy. I think you guys get another pick um, somewhere else on ramp maybe. Um, yeah, okay. So you get a kill here on Cat. You guys are in a great situation, three on five situation. Just simply going to different parts of the map and not bunching up gives you you know look look at the uh, the 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 results so far um t-shirt gets a scout kill off on him you guys now know that there's two full hp guys and one guy that has you know half hp and all you did was just spread out and you win this round pretty convincingly so one thing i'm gonna talk about later when i go over your guys' setups um, is having is having a default and basically this should be your guys's default the play that you guys got into one guy going mid one guy going ramp one guy jumping across left side mid to get to um, a closet in the left side mid to look at cat and then two guys going halls or whatever I mean that should be your guys's default strat not four people going into halls and one dude underpass or one dude mid I mean you're not you're you're not getting a whole lot of information. You never know if they're pushing you. You never know if it's an eco round until it's too late. So you guys win this round pretty convincingly, even with an off buy. So just keep that kind of stuff in mind. All right. And here we are on the next round after you guys got that really good round where you ran around and got some picks and worked the map. Now, what happened is they just got a little aggressive on you because watch what happens. You guys are just setting up. Look at this dude looking nowhere. And oh, you, you, uh, you were actually throwing a pop flash for him to peek mid, but so he was turned around. Now, the drawback to that is if you don't get to mid quickly, they're going to do this. They're going to rush up mid because they have the advantage. If they rush up mid here and cut you guys off at that little spot right here where his crosshair is at, he can throw a smoke and basically cut off the entire map because that's a choke point of the map. And you got early fragged because you guys were setting up for a pop flash but ultimately like i said in the last uh the last segment was you guys need to get into a default every round where somebody goes mid somebody goes underpass somebody goes b halls and basically if you had a default setup that you guys got into every round and then executed off that default you'd have much better success um i would like to see you guys go to mid one underpass one b halls one a ramp that's um, a pretty standard default setup and setting up in the beginning of round for pushes and setting up in the beginning of round to get information is 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 going to help you guys dramatically so they win this round pretty convincingly and um it was simply because you guys were not 
ready for a, a mid push. Obviously, it's not a very conventional way to play the game, but you just still have to be set up for these plays on pretty much every part of the map. And the reason that you will set up for these plays is for two reasons. Um, you obviously want to set up for pushes to kill you, and then or for them to kill you, and then setting up for them pushing places to get information. You need to have players in all spots of these, all parts of these map, all parts of the map, so that you can get information as to if they're trying to get information. So they're going to push like B halls and see if you're there, and they're going to say, "Hey guys, B halls clear," and their players are going to adjust accordingly. So you have to have players basically in all spots of this, all spots of the map, so that they can't gain information as to what your guys' strategy is. All right, and. You guys actually just kind of go into a back and forth battle. You guys went around. You guys get them on a eco. You guys get them on a save. You guys win a nice little two v three. Blah blah blah. You guys end up losing the match like sixteen ten, I think sixteen eleven, something like that. You guys bring it back a little bit. Um, I'm gonna start talking about the setups now. Um, there's not really like not not really much to comment on because you guys get them in some saves and stuff and just some really just some really standard play. Um. It's really how you guys should have been playing earlier in the match, um, but you didn't. So anyway, for your guys' CT setup, you guys were playing a guy cat, a guy window, and a guy connector, and a guy CT spawn, and a guy in B. A better play. Um, there's a few setups for CT side, obviously, but a pretty much a standard CT side setup is one mid, one B, one triple stack, um, an A site because you can help the connector guy kind of um, and CT spawn and cat and basically what you're doing with that setup is creating crossfires in a whole bunch of parts of the map. Your guys is set up right now. You guys uh, were watching the same spots on the map. Two people were watching the same spots on the map very frequently and let's just put this on uh, auto director. Um, two people were watching the same spot on the map very frequently and you have to you have to keep in mind that that crossfires are your friend, man. And every chance that you can get a chance to set up a crossfire, you do. Um, so with that CT side set up, one mid, one B, one triple stack, and A site, which is basically the far back box against the wall, um, and one CT spawn, and then one cat. You basically have a crossfires on the guys in in mid. Then you have an opera in mid. That if they're gonna come up cat, then you have another crossfire with the guy on cat. If they come up connector, then you have another crossfire when the dudes are coming out of connector. And if there's people coming out of a palace, then you have a CT spawn player shooting at them. If they're coming out of uh, a halls, you have two people shooting at them. It's just a, it's a really good setup to use if you watch. Um, Fnatic, they use this. They use this setup. I think Titan also uses it too. But you can basically steal a lot of the CT side setups and T side setups, default setups from a lot of the top teams. Um, but knowing how they execute and stuff is something that Netcode Premium is actually really good about because we break down why things work and how it works so that you can get an idea of what the goal is for the rounds. Um, so try those CT setups from now on. A, a better T side default um, you guys started to do later on in the match, it was a little too late at that point, was basically being spread out on the map and getting picks. I would like to see you guys send two people mid, one person with an AK, one person with an op, so that you can see if somebody goes underpass and and uh, see if a CT jumps underpass. Send a terrorist underpass. Um, send one person B halls and one person A ramp. <clears throat> if you don't want to send somebody B halls, you can basically just send somebody there early, throw a smoke, you know, a decoy over or something, maybe a flash over, and then run, rotate him back to either A ramp or A halls, depending on what you guys see in the round. But basically, what I'm going to try and explain here is. CS is not about set plays. You you will very rarely see these top teams have set plays, and if they do, it's because they know that the other team uh, sets up in a very specific way. So usually if you see a team set up a set play, it's because they've already watched the demo of the other team, and they're like, okay, I, we know exactly how to counter these guys. Um, not sure if that was the case with this, guys, this, this match that you guys played in here. But you need to get into a default setup every round so that you can know if they're getting information on you guys. You can know if they're pushing spots. You can know if they have guns or not. You just need to get into a, a default play, a default setup, sorry. So I'd like to see, like I said, one A ramp, two mid, 
one B halls, one going underpass. And what you do is you basically work mid control. So the opera will come out, clear window. Maybe you could smoke it off from T spawn so he doesn't have to take that gunfight. And then getting some smokes into connector, messing around with them a little bit on cat, doing a little damage to the guy in connector, doing a little bit of damage to the guy in window. And then regrouping and saying, hey guys, there's one guy that's rotated off A, or I've done some damage to him, or he's in CT spawn, or he's in stairs, and then basically using the information to your advantage to hit something together. Um, pretty much every hit, every strat that you want to do, you want to be pinching sites from multiple spots. So a very standard A, strat, a site strat is two people will go A ramp, two people will go mid, and maybe one A halls or palace. And you'll basically throw a smoke mid, dick around with them a little bit in mid, push the guy off cat into B site so that you won't be running into a stack on A, maybe even killing the dude in mid. Basically, once you've taken a little bit of mid control, you'll smoke window, you'll smoke cat, and you'll get up connector at the same time as your teammates that have smoked over from spawn. Uh, sorry, from, uh, from A ramp to spawn and to um, the stairs at A site. And this strat that you guys actually do right here would be a perfect combination if you were to take mid control early and then basically wait this out. Um, a lot of teams are going to get try and get a ramp information, and you you always want to get that kill when they do. Um, they're either going to push up against the, the the wall right here on the opposite opposite side of that A, uh, the A letter on the wall. You want to get that kill, and when you do, then you basically just just hit it fast. But if you guys got into that into that mindset that you get into a default strategy and then you you work based off of what you see and what's going on you're going to have much better success instead of getting into these set plays in the first 30 seconds of rounds and bunching up in the map when four of you guys are in one part of the map it doesn't really do a whole lot for you guys and you know if 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 people push on the other spot the other spots the other parts of maps they're getting all this information and they're just going to adjust and position themselves accordingly. So that concludes this demo review. I uh, hope that helped you guys. If you take what I said into play, you guys are going to be a much better Mirage team. I can pretty much guarantee it. Um, this took a little bit longer than I expected. It was a little long winded. It took me about three hours to actually review the demo and, and watch it because CS kept on crashing. But, um, I hope this helps, guys, and um, if you have any questions, let me know, and I can further explain other things better or more um, if you have any questions. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks, guys.